just يعني إن شاء الله just touch on the month of Ramadan. الحمد لله. Every single one of us in the weeks upcoming towards the month of Ramadan, we've all been hearing about the month of Ramadan and that this is the month of worship, this is the month of Ibadah, this is the month of the Quran, this is the month of SubhanAllah, this is the month where every single one of us needs to step it up and march. This is the month where we disconnect from the world around us and we connect to Allah SWT. This is the month where you and I enter into extreme ibadah between us and between Allah SWT. This is not the month of gatherings. This is not the month of feasting. This is not the month of Musa Salam. This is not the month of hanging out and going out to coffee lounges and having a gila. This is the month that you and I will connect to Allah SWT. This is the month where, this is the month like no other. You pray like you've never prayed before. You read Quran like you've never read before. And we also make dhikr like we've never made before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily we have ordained fasting upon you so that you may attain taqwa, piety. Umar ibn al-Khattab one time he asked one of the companions, I think it was Umayyad ibn Ka'ab, Umayyad ibn Ka'ab, says to him, what is taqwa? Have you ever in your life walked through a field that had thorny plants? He says to me, yes, I have. He says to me, what did you do when you walked through? He says to me, I lifted up my garment and I was very cautious as I was walking through the field so that the thorns would not my clothing. He says to me, yeah, I mean, what we need, this is not what. When you and I, we lift up our garments and we're cautious as to how we walk through this world. We make sure that we do not fall into the sins that Allah SWT has told us to stay away from. So Allah SWT says that verily I have made fasting or done on you so that you may attain taqwa. But why do you want to need taqwa? SubhanAllah, he, the one, the individual that can very, the one who can truly fast for Allah SWT, the one who can truly attain taqwa within his life, then this is the individual. The Muslim that can truly fast for Allah, this is the Muslim that can truly live for Allah Because this is how Allah SWT wants you and I to live. To attain taqwa, to stay away from evil, to enjoy that which is good. So why do I need to learn how to truly live for Allah? Because only he who truly lives for Allah is he who can truly die for Allah and we all want to die for Allah in this time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give myself and give you guys and give the Ummah taqwa inshallah. One of, one of the worships that you and I can engage in within this month is dhikr. And dhikr more or less is to be in the remembrance of Allah And dhikr is the sort of worship that you can do wherever you are whatever state that you're in, right? So, whatever spare time we have, we can fill that time up with dhikr. And when you and when you engage yourself in dhikr, then you're connecting yourself with Allah SWT. You're gaining rewards. And this is a worship that a lot of us, we tend to forget about, we tend to neglect. There's mountains, mountains of ashes sitting here, man. So much to gain, and yet we turn our backs on it. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in that beautiful hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, I'll do my best to say it in the Arabic, it's very, very easy. Wallahi, if you learn it, you feel, you feel a lot better. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Kalimatan, Khafifatan, Ala Lisan, Fakilatan, Filmizan, Habibatan, Ila Rahman. Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Subhanallah, Ladi. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Very two words, they write on the tongue. But they're heavy on the scale. And they're loved by Allah. What are they? SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. I heard one time one of the scholars he was saying, he was explaining to people, what is meant by heavy on the scales? Let's, let's sort of try to paint a picture. Just, yani, just how heavy is SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. 
this scholar is of the opinion that it is so heavy that no matter how heavy you imagine it to be, on the day of judgment it's going to be heavier. So it's not limited. However heavy you imagine it to be, how heavy do you want it to be? As heavy as a car? As heavy as a mountain? What if it's as heavy as Australia? He says, no matter how heavy you imagine it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more than that of which you imagine. Imagine the time that has passed you by where you've done nothing and you could have filled up your time with subhanAllah behind him. SubhanAllah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when he ascended into the heavens, in the beautiful journey of Islam al Maharaj, he says that in one of the heavens he bumped into our Prophet Sayyidina Ibrahim. I'm cutting it short here. And more or less when Sayyidina Ibrahim, when he met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to me, Rasulullah, give salam to your ummah on my behalf. And in Sunnah, whenever we hear this, we return the salam to Ali wa sallam. So our father Ibrahim is giving us advice. He's telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, tell your ummah. That very heaven, the land of heaven has already been divided. And that its soil is soft and its water is sweet. And the seeds for the trees in heaven is subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. So this is the advice that our Father is giving to Allah. SubhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. That's already two trees for you. And there are many, many hadith, some weak, some shine, as far as to what sort of tree are we talking about? One of them says that it would take an Arabian horse a hundred years and it wouldn't even cross its shadow. And subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah. These are the little things that you and I can engage in in this month. You're in the car, you're going somewhere. Engage in liquor. You're sitting down, you're waiting for the salat. Engage in liquor. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Verily, I make istighfar, meaning he says, Astaghfirullah, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one hadith, he says, 70 times a day. In another, he says, 100 times a day. Expressing that he's the Buddha. Look at it. Engage yourself. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayat al Kursi, verse number 255, yeah? It's verse number 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah in chapter 2. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever reads Ayat al-Kursi, after every prayer, five prayers, after every prayer you read Ayat al-Kursi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling you and I that the only thing that will stand between you and you and I, the only thing that will stand between you and paradise is death. So all you got to do is die, man, and that's where you're going to be. <laughs> yeah? Ayat al Kursi. Small but powerful. Small but powerful. Making, making, yani just making salat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, You ever make salat on me? Allah will make salat on you ten times, man. Ten times. That time before Makhrib is a special time, man. Engage. Connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make salat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the month for it. This is the month that really we need to hit our heart. Look at, look at as much as you can. You, we need to get to the better. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that verily, whoever remembers Allah, whoever remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his own, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you on his own. And if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you in a better gathering, gathering of angels. You know, being in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being in dhikr, you know, subhanAllah, in every worship we do in Islam, you need to have intention. Can I make wudu if I don't have intention? Can I pray if I don't have intention? Yeah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned, so say he for instance, verily the tranquility will come down. Look, I've been talking about Allah for less than five minutes and already you feel different. Already you're thinking different. Already your perspective of tomorrow has changed. We've been talking about Allah for a couple of minutes. Rasulullah sallallahu says, whoever gathers to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verily the angels will join us in this gathering. 
it's a long hadith, it's a beautiful one, and then I got back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But more or less at the end of this gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have forgiven every single one of us our sins. But that's not the amazing thing. The amazing thing is, is that there's probably one of us now is thinking, man, hasn't this guy finished yet? He's doing my thing. Right? Let's, let's, let's be honest, right? You know, sometimes, sometimes you, you go to like a, 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 you know, like you go to a nice talk, and then the brother carries on, and then he dies off and then he starts thinking. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even that individual man, if you came here with no intention whatsoever to listen to the talk, you've come here with no intention whatsoever. You could be a drug dealer waiting outside, man, and you're waiting for one of the brothers because he owes you money. But because you're next to this guy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him his sins as well. This is the amazing thing about it. We stand out. We stand out to the creation of the heavens, but the star stands out in the sky. So we need to engage in the community. Engage in the community. Do not let a moment pass you by. SubhanAllah, we have to. SubhanAllah, we Heavy on the scales, man. Heavy. And there's two types of dhikr. There's the general dhikr, which is, you know, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, wa lahi wa And then you've got the specific dhikr. What do I say when I enter the toilet? What do I say when I come out of the toilet? What do I say before I eat? What do I say after I eat? All of this stuff is worship. This is why Ibadah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is giving you and I ammunition against two, against shaitan. When you come to eat, you say, Bismillah, shaitan doesn't eat with you anymore. When you come to wear your clothes, Bismillah, shaitan doesn't get dressed with you anymore. When you enter the house, when you leave the house, when you enter the masjid, when you leave the masjid. All of this dhikr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you, uh, sorry, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is giving you and I ammunition to protect ourselves. Engage in it. This is the month to learn it. This is the month to learn it. This is... I mean, Allah, I can't, I can't find the words to express the importance of it. And just think back at all the time that has passed us by, man. You jump on the train, you go to the city, and that's 40 minutes. What did you do in that 40 minutes, really? You can't read Quran, you don't have Quran handy on you? Engage in the Quran. Make dua. Make dua. Rasulullah sallallahu he says that when a brother makes dua for his brother, listen to this. When a brother makes dua for his brother, an angel will stand by your side. And for everything you ask for the brother, the angel will say, and to him, Allah. So if I'm asking Jannah for the brother, this angel is going to stand by my side and tell Allah and give the angel to him as well. <laughs> this angel is going to say, Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give paradise to him as well. So don't hate your brother, jump on. And if the brother's not saying to really tick you off, man, and you want to start laying into him, stop, stop. I love you, you hold a man in The sister's upstairs. Right? So you say, what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you for those of you. And this angel will stand by your side and you tell him what? And to him is all. And to him. I'll finish it off by my hands. Unbelievable, you know. We hear about Khalid ibn al-Walid, the soul of Allah as well. In one of the battles against the Romans, I believe it was under the Khilafah of Abu Bakr of Iran. They, they were fighting the Romans, and this, and this, and this was massive, man. You know, the Bedouins, people used to eat dead carcasses on the floor. Huh? Now they're fighting the greatest empire in the world that they knew. So, and Khalid al Walid was the leader, and the Muslims needed him, of course. So, anyway, one time after one of the battles, he was fighting. And then the armies came to rest. The Muslims were on one side, the non believers were on the other. So Khalid Walid went to sleep. He jumps on his horse, and the Muslims said, Where are you going? He goes, Well, I'm going to the non believers. They're going to walk on your own. He goes, Be on my own. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> what do you mean on your own? That's craziness, man. That's, that's, that's suicidal. And he went. He went. And he went to the gathering of the enemy at night and he walked around them. He walked through them. He walked amongst them on his horse and he came back. And the Muslims said to him, man, what were Weren't you scared? He says to him, did you not hear the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That verily the difference between the one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't is like the living and the dead. So how can the dead harm the living? Yaqeen, man. Yaqeen. This, this was a lip 
ومسدس يقين النهار ده حاجه ده 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 حاجه ليفين سوي عصف الله سبحانه وتعالى تمام الصوره ده ليفين ان شاء الله ان دوا بيست انجيج انجيج ذكر 